So talking to us about the immune secrets of medicinal mushrooms and Chinese herbs. And so we're going to be talking uh, about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking about what you should know about the herbs that China's hospitals have started investigating during this pandemic. We're going to talk about how classical Chinese medicine teaches us to boost uh, uh, immunity and, and what are the must try mushrooms to boost long term immune function. And we'll also talk about some common mistakes to avoid when buying mushrooms. There's a lot of stuff out there on the market that's really not very good quality. And we'll talk about ancient herbal secrets for adapting to stress. So, George, thanks so much for joining us. No, it's a pleasure to be here. So why don't, you, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, well, you know, um, my background, I, this is a very long journey for me. Um, I started out on Wall Street. I was actually a crude oil trader and I, and I really had a crisis. Um, and I decided I had to change my lifestyle. I had to change my priorities. So I transitioned into um, being a chef in restaurants. And while I was working in a restaurant, um, one of my, uh, my coworkers used to come in to work every day with this muddy water that he used to drink. And I was like, how bizarre. But one of the things I noticed about him was that he had an amazing amount of energy. He was never in a bad mood and he never got sick. So I said, well, there may be something to this muddy water that he's, that he's drinking. Um, so I conned him into in getting me to the herb shop where he used to go. And um, the first uh, elixir that I ever had was reishi mushroom. And I literally, I literally had an epiphany in doing reishi mushroom. I, you know, I had so much, um, I had so much baggage that I was carrying around with me for so long. And we'll talk about reishi a little, uh, you know, a little bit further, but uh, let me just say that it's, um, reishi is like a psychic garbage collector. It, it just takes um, destructive cycles and it transforms them into benevolent cycles. And you just go through this transformation and that's what happened to me with reishi. Um, so I was totally hooked from, from day one. Um, I was absolutely fascinated with this to the point where I decided that I wanted to pursue this. I wanted to really learn about it. So I enrolled in acupuncture school because um, in acupuncture school, it's the only place that you can study classical Chinese medicine and herbology too. So I got a master's degree uh, in 1997, and uh, I became a practicing herbalist. And then in 2014, I went back and got my doctorate in classical Chinese medicine. Um, and recently, I did a two-year program in uh, specializing in uh, Chinese dermatology. So I've been doing that uh, so I've been doing herbalism ever since that that first day. Basically, yeah, I was totally hooked on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, uh, what should somebody know about the the herbs in China's hospitals that they've been investigating during the pandemic? Um, well, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna love this. Um, in uh, in March, I think it was March 14th. Um, CNN picked up a story about uh, about the herbs that they were starting to use uh, in treatment of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And you're going to love the name of this soup. It was called the lung detox soup. So that's, you know, <laughs> right up to you. Um, and what they were doing is what they noticed, and this was, this was mandated by the government. So the government said, you must use classical Chinese medicine in addition to Western medicine in treating the COVID-19 patients that were in the hospital. And what they noticed was 
that soon after they started doing that, their patients started to recover. And that's when they started to flatten the curve. That's when the infection rate went down. And that's when the people who are actually in the ICU units started to improve. And there's probably a good reason for that. Um, you know, in China has about a four to 5,000 year written history. They kept really good records and they have had um, about 320 documented lives, uh, um, large scale epidemics in their history. Uh, from about the Eastern Han era to the Qing dynasty. It's about 2000 years. Um, they had 320 documented epidemics. And the amazing thing about that is they are great observers and they try to understand um, the function and how these pathogens actually work and how they're transmitted. And they came up with um, formulas to actually start to do that. And most of these, uh, the herbs in those formulas are herbs that are antibacterial, antiviral, and detoxifying herbs. And as a matter of fact, there was one uh, epidemic in the Three, Kingdom, Three Kingdoms era, which is about 220 AD to 280 AD, where they estimate that two thirds of the population of China died from this epidemic. Hmm. And um, I think since we obviously didn't have the kind of communication that we have now, I think if we went back and looked at what was happening in the rest of the world during that time, we would have probably found that that in all likelihood was a pandemic, not only an epidemic in China, but it was a pandemic. So they developed a really good understanding about the nature of pathogens. Um, and that's why they were so successful in basically curbing um, this epidemic fairly quickly uh, mm -hmm. for a company, uh, com a country that has, you know, three billion people in it. Yeah, and so what is the what is the lung detox? What's in that? What herbs? You know, they didn't actually they didn't actually tell us what that formula was, but they just said that's they they called it the lung detox soup. Okay. Okay. I, I was curious if maybe I had some low hum quo because I know that's really good for lungs. But and so um so so how can classical Chinese medicine teach us uh, about boosting our immunity, or what can it teach us about boosting our immunity? Well, you know, I'm gonna give you an example of the differences between, because we're talking about Western and Chinese medicine and how they basically treat differently, um, certainly in situations like this. And if you take the, the view of what classical Chinese medicine is and how they view health, okay, there's a, there's a fairly big difference between how Western medicine views it and how classical Chinese medicine does. And health is actually uh, in classical Chinese medicine, that's an active process of refining body essences, all right? And in cultivating a vital force in the body. Um, this concept of nourishing, um, nourishing life, okay? It's about um, making the physiological function in the body uh, working at an optimum level. So that's how they view, view health. They have a very a proactive uh, and, and an active concept of what health is. In Western medicine, if you were to ask a, a Western doctor what health is, he would basically tell you that it's, a, it's an absence of pathology. And that's a very different way of looking at things. Um, also, classical Chinese medicine is probably one of the first functional medicines 
um, that there was and still is. So functional medicine now has become um, very widespread, but uh, Chinese medicine was always a functional medicine as opposed to Western medicine, which looks at things more in a structural way. And like if you were talking about how do we view the immune system, for instance, okay, in classical Chinese medicine, the immune system is viewed as um, an energy, it's called Wei Qi, all right? And it basically uh, flows at the surface of the body, just under the skin and maybe a little bit outside of the skin. There's an energetic there. And the basic function of the immune system is not to allow any kind of pathogenic influence to pass that barrier of the Wei Qi. That's the, the first line of defense, okay? Now, if you were to ask, uh, so its function, obviously, is to create a barrier, to be a defensive Qi. Um, if you were to ask uh, Western medicine how they define the immune system, they would probably tell you, well, it's composed of you know, T cells and B cells and lymphocytes and macrophages. So they would give you the structural um, components of the immune system, but they wouldn't actually tell you more about what the function of the immune system should be in a healthy person. So um, when we treat disease and we treat disharmony in classical Chinese medicine, right? Um, so how we boost the immune system is to actually boost that protective energy in the body. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and can you tell us about some of the, the must-try, you know, mushrooms that people should be taking if they want to improve their immunity? I love mushrooms. I put mushrooms in smoothies, and it's definitely part of my regimen to get beta-glucans and just, uh, you know, a vitamin D. There are just so many, you know, other benefits to them. What, what one should we try and what are their benefits? Well, one of the things you have to understand about mushrooms is in, uh, in nature, where they grow. They actually grow on probably one of the most um, difficult uh, parts of the ecosystem that you could probably live in, right? And the thing is that mushrooms are actually susceptible to the same things that we are susceptible to, but they are actually more susceptible to them because they're out in the open environment. So what they do as a defense mechanism is they create these chemicals, they create these constituents in their own bodies that will help uh, defend against the bacteria and the virus and the other fungi that are ready to attack them in nature. So um, when we look about, when we talk about the great mushrooms that we should consume, because I think they, sh you know, mushrooms share like 90% of our DNA is very similar. So that 10% makes a huge difference. So um, whatever will actually give them immunity also will give us immunity. One of my favorite, you know, my one of my favorite mushrooms obviously is reishi mushroom, is Ganoderma lucidum, which the other names for it is the spirit plant or the mushroom of immortality. And in China, this mushroom has been revered since antiquity. Um, as a matter of fact, in uh, the Emperor T in the Qin Dynasty, uh, it said that he actually got together uh, 300 men and 300 women and put them in ships to actually go search for these mushrooms that he had heard about that were that were growing in the east, which are, is near the the, the, the Japan's, um, and evidently they were shipwrecked and. That's how they said that the Japans were founded, but that's where a lot of these mushrooms were growing. And during um, the dynastic period in China, reishi mushroom was mandated by law 
that it should only be given to the emperor and the royal court. Uh, no one else could take it in the country. It was mm -hmm. that prized. Um, and so uh, the active ingredients in mushrooms in general are usually beta glucans, which are a form of polysaccharides, which are long chain uh, sugars and, um, and triterpenoids or tritropines. And that gives the mushrooms some of the, like especially reishi, gives it that bitter, that bitter taste that you get. Um, like if you put it in coffee, you can actually notice that. And those are some of the um, ingredients or the active ingredients in them. Also in reishi, you've got ganoderic acid and lucidenic acid. Um, those are also the immune boosting parts of the mushroom. And the great thing about reishi uh, is that it not only boosts the immune system, okay? And there's a tropism for every herb that we talk about. And reishi goes to the lungs, the liver, and the heart, right? Um, any herb that goes to the heart is going to have like, a, are you familiar with the concept of Shen or the spirit? Yes. Okay. So any of those herbs that, that go to the, have a tropism for the heart are going to have that Shen aspect where they keep you calm and they keep you centered. And Reishi is famous for this. Um, but the other thing is it goes to the lungs so it's going to really benefit the lung chi and um, it's going to boost the chi in general, boost the energy in general. So one of the things that, a couple of the things that reishi does, reishi inhibits histamine release in the body, all right? Uh, it's also hepatoprotective. It's going to protect the liver against oxidative stress. It's uh, anti-hypoglycemic. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, it induces apoptosis in cells that are starting to do things that they shouldn't do, like replicate too fast. Um, it also inhibits uh, viruses. It's a great antioxidant. And again, it's a central nervous system sedator. So. Take And one of the things that Reishi does is it's going to stimulate uh, the T cells and the B cells in the body also. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you're talking about immunity, one of the things that affects the immune system in a very detrimental way is stress, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, most people usually come down with some kind of illness or disharmony after they've gone through a really stressful situation. And so that's why reishi is such an amazing herb because while, when you're taking it, it's not only boosting your immune system, but it's also keeping you really calm at the same time. So that's a great combination because keeping you calm is going to keep your immune system strong just like that. Um, there's also, uh, in, uh, a study from 2018 in the biomedicine pharmaco uh, pharmacotherapy volume 107, they did a study on reishi and they found that it has about 400 biologically active constituents to it. Um, and that's one of the reasons why uh, Western medicine has such a difficult time understanding the function of herbs and what they do in the body is because they can't uh, isolate, you know, like one fraction of the mushroom and say, okay, this, this is the active ingredient that makes this mushroom do what it does. And they just can't pin that down. So it's really frustrating for them uh, to do that. But that's, so that's my first, reishi mushroom is definitely the first herb that I would recommend. Um, 
probably the next one would be cordyceps. And uh, cordyceps is, uh, the Chinese name for that is uh, Dong Chong Sha Sao. And originally cordyceps was found in the high plateaus in the Himalayas and in uh, the northern parts of China. And um, it actually grew, it's a fungus that grew on the head of a caterpillar. And in the springtime, when the snows started to melt, um, the herdsmen in those areas would notice that the yak would go and they would be eating uh, these mushrooms. And um, one of the things that they noticed about that, as soon as they did that, they started to have a lot of energy, especially during the mating season. And uh, so the herdsmen started going and picking these mushrooms and they found that um, it had the same effect in the human body too. It gave them an incredible amount of energy. And again, uh, uh, cordyceps has a tropism again for the lungs and for the kidneys. Now, um, <laughs> now in classical Chinese medicine, that's a really important uh, relationship. You're not going to find it in Western medicine, but the lungs, lung and the kidneys have a, a, a very strong connection where in Chinese medicine, we say when you take an inhalation, okay, the kidney chi, the, the, the energy of the kidneys actually brings the breath down. So the lung energy is a descending energy. It descends and then it disperses throughout the whole body. Uh, that's probably how we would describe how the lungs actually disseminate oxygen throughout the body. Is it, they descend it and they disperse it out to the exterior into the, all, all of the organ systems. But it's the lung and the kidneys that have that relationship. And it's very interesting. Uh, I've been hearing on the news about a lot of the patients in the ICU units are having, not only are they having uh, the virus attack the lung tissue, but the virus is also attacking the kidney tissue. And in Western medicine, they wouldn't get that connection, but in Chinese medicine, they would understand that. So I thought that would, that was a really interesting thing. Um, so for cordyceps, um, it's really good for energy, for chi. It tonifies the kidney yang, it tonifies the lungs, it augments the essence. Um, and it also, the major function, it transforms phlegm and stops cough. So uh, during this time, uh, these, the, these mushrooms that I'm gonna be talking about, a lot of them, again, have the tropism for the lungs. So this is a, these are good uh, mushrooms to be taking during this specific time um, in our society. Um, and let's see. Okay. So I think the next one that I would consider would be, um, agaragus and agaragus, agaragus is the beta glucan superstar. I mean, this is the, uh, mushroom that is definitely, it has the highest content of beta glucans of any mushroom, um, in comparison. Um, and the other thing is due to its low molecular weight. Now, you know, when we talk about these um, polysaccharide chains, the beta glucans, these are really, really big molecules and they're, they have a very heavy molecular weight. And what the body has to do when it's, when it's trying to assimilate that, it has to basically cleave those chains into smaller particles so that it can actually absorb it and use it in the body. And agaricus blazei is um, one of the herbs, uh, one of the mushrooms that has a fairly low molecular weight. So its assimilation into the body is really, really quick. 
uh, as opposed to a lot of the other ones that take a little bit more time. Um, it's also uh, one of the mushrooms that will tonify or will activate every single cell of the immune system. All of the medicinal mushrooms don't do that. Some of them are specific to the T cells or to the B cells or to the macrophages, but the Garagus blazei is one of the ones that um, will actually stimulate the whole immune system and bring it into action. Um, and this is a, another uh, mushroom that is really, really good for allergies. Uh, so it really down regulates um, the level of uh, TH2 mediated allergic reaction in the body. Reishi does that too, by the way. Reishi is really good at down regulating the immune system. And this is also really important during this time because um, what we want to be doing, especially for people who uh, may be infected with this virus, um, and we talked about uh, the cytokine storm. I think you did a really good post on the cytokine storm. Um, and what you need to do in cases like that is you want the immune system to keep working, but at the same time, you actually have to bring that immune response, that cytokine storm, you have to bring it down and you have to modulate it. So reishi is one of the amazing immune modulators that will actually has that dual direction of stimulating the immune system if it's deficient or suppressing the immune system if it's overacting. And those are definitely things that we want to have uh, in our tool bag nowadays. Um, and I think maybe one of the last ones that I'm going to mention um, is chaga mushroom, uh, which has uh, become really, really popular. Um, and chaga uh, has a component in it called betulinic acid. Uh, that's its active ingredient. Um, and this comes from uh, white birch trees, basically. And um, it induces uh, mitochondrial apoptosis in cells that are also uh, starting to become unregulated. So that's one of the great things about chaga. It's also um, been really effective and there have been a lot of studies in it in uh, cancer treatments and also a lot of the cancer drugs in Japan are actually based on the active constituents in the medicinal mushrooms. Um, so they've been doing a lot of studies with that um, for a very, very long time. It's also uh, very antiviral and antioxidant too. So chaga is uh, again, one of the really good medicinal mushrooms. So those are the ones that I think are really great. Okay, fantastic. And so let's talk a little bit about common mistakes that people uh, wanna avoid with buying mushrooms. Can you give us some little tips and differentiations on that? Because just because it says chaga on the label, doesn't mean you're getting all the benefits of that. And so why is that? Okay, um, what you wanna do first of all, when you're reading a label is you wanna make sure that the herb that you're getting is the correct species. Because even in the uh, medicinal mushroom, you could have a, a mushroom that, that could have 400 variants in that species. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're getting the right one. Um, most mushrooms have a cellular structure um, that is composed of chitin. It's the same thing that lobsters make their shells with. So it's a very, very, it's a very hard substance. And to get the active ingredients out of um, medicinal mushrooms, you have to have um, some kind of force that is going to crush that cell wall, that chitin complex, so that you can actually extract the active ingredients from it. So for the most part, I would say that what you want to look for uh, in most of these things is an extract um, of the herb, of the, of the mushroom. 
um, a lot of a lot of uh, companies, what they'll do is they'll take the dried mushroom and they'll grind it to a powder, and then they'll stick it into a capsule or they'll stick it into a bag. The problem is that they haven't, uh, they probably haven't crushed that cell wall to the extent that it needs to be so that when it goes into your digestive system, we don't have the enzymes to actually dissolve chitin, okay? Um, so you're not going to be getting the extraction. You're not, you're not going to be getting the benefit of the active ingredients because that herb hasn't been, that mushroom hasn't been processed properly. Um, we, you know, like uh, the extraction method that we're most familiar with is uh, hot water extraction under extreme pressure so that the pressure will crush the cell walls the active ingredients will come out into the soup and then they'll actually just remove the water part of it and you're left with the extracted herb the active ingredients are, are all there in full spectrum so um that's definitely what people should be looking out for um and again, the identification of the proper species that you should be getting, um, that process. And, you know, you just have to make sure that you're dealing with a reputable company. Usually, you know, companies that have been around a long time. There are a lot of very, very good companies um, that make great products. But there are also the charlatans out there who... Art. Yeah, and yeah, you don't always want to buy uh, based on price because you get what you pay for. And so some of the so if you see like the same mushroom, the same product, same milligrams, but this one is you know a, you know half the price. There's usually a reason for that because you know it it's expensive to go through this extraction process and have the the and also an active the an amount of the mushroom that actually will uh, have a, 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 you know, elicit a change in the body. Right. Sometimes uh, products that have like maybe 20 different things in them might have some mushrooms in there, but there's not enough of that mushroom to elicit the response or the change that you're wanting in the body. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and that's another thing, you know, when you do those, those extractions, most of them are multiple ratios. So you're doing a huge amount of herb uh, to get a certain amount of, of the extract. So, you know, those extracts tend to be a lot more powerful in their effect than if you were to just, as I said, grind up uh, an herb and put it into a powder. Um, it's not going to be as strong in its effect in the body. Yeah. And so on a label, are you looking for, say, chaga extract as opposed to just chaga? Like, What should we look for on the label? Um, it, well, usually they'll say, yes, an extract of chaga root or, or the fruiting body. Or, and some people use the mycelium. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, uh, the mycelium and the fruiting body, there are benefits to both of them. So uh, a lot of people are, say that uh, the mycelium is not as, ef as effective as the fruiting body. It actually depends on the, on the mushroom that you're talking about. It depends on the herb that you're talking about. What is the difference there between those two? Yeah, so the fruiting body is actually the reproductive organ of the mushroom. Uh, it's the one where the spores will form and then they'll, they'll actually be jettisoned into the atmosphere so they can propagate themselves. Um, the mycelium is actually the food gathering apparatus that the mushroom uses as its nutrient source. So you're going to get in the mycelium of the mushroom, you're going to get all of the nutrients that it's using to actually make the beneficial constituents that it's it's forming and even some of uh, the even some of the beneficial constituents are in the mycelium so uh, using both is is really it's not a bad thing a lot of people think that the mycelium is an inferior product and it's and it's not 
it all depends on how it's used, how it's processed. Okay, fantastic. And so we have one question from Catherine Chong. Thank you so much for joining us. So can you please repeat the name of the third mushroom recommended? And uh, the third one was all agaragus. It was agaragus blazi. Agaragus, can we spell that? A-G-A-R-I-C-U-S, uh, uh, G-U-S rather. And Blazei is B-L-A-Z-E-I. Um, it's called the Garrison Blazei because uh, I think it was first noticed in um, um, about 120 miles southeast of Sao Paulo in Brazil is where mm -hmm. uh, it, one of the first places that the mushroom was discovered. So that's why they call it Blazei. Yeah, I have, here yeah. they have some good shrooms in the Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, and so uh, let's talk about some ancient herbal secrets for adapting to stress. So a couple of the ones you you mentioned are definite definite stress adaptogens, where they can help us to control our stress, which is really be helpful right now. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, uh, one of the ones that I one of the herbs that I want to bring up. Um, is astragalus. Now, astragalus isn't specific uh, for dealing with stress, but astragalus is one of the herbs that's specific to strengthening the Wei Qi of the body. So strengthening the immune system and astragalus specifically stimulates the T cells and the B cells, the beta cells in the immune system, okay? Um, again, astragalus, the tropism for that herb is the lung and the spleen. Now, that's a really important combination in classical Chinese medicine because the lungs and the spleen, and the spleen is like our you know, terminology for the digestive system and everything that happens in the digestive system. Um, the energy that you that your body is running on right now is being created from the air that you breathe and the food that you eat. So it's the lung and the spleen that actually creates that day-to-day -day energy. Um, and it's that combination, the extraction of the nutrients from the food with the combination of the air that's going to give you the chi. And that chi is also uh, going to augment that protective energy, that defensive energy of the body. That's um, your first line of defense. And it's also, it's, it's going to stabilize the exterior so that you don't have any ports of entry for any of the things that are floating around in the atmosphere. Um, so that's uh, one of the ones I wanted to mention. Um, another one is, is reishi. Now, um, excuse me. Another one is Shizandra. Now, Shizandra falls in the category of the astringent herbs. But again, it, it goes into the heart, the kidney, and the lung channel. And it's said that uh, Shizandra contains the leakage of lung chi. So it sort of like keeps the lung energy solidified and stable. And it also assists in the grasping of the chi. Remember I was talking about the connection between the lung and the kidneys and the kidneys have that grasping aspect where they bring the lung energy down. They bring the air down. Uh, Shizandra is one of the herbs that actually helps that function of grasping the chi and descending it into the body so it can utilize it. Um, the other thing that Shizandra does and this goes to the stress issue is it quiets the spirit. So it's another one that's going to make you feel really calm and, and centered. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, gynostemma. Now gynostemma is, uh, is actually a, it's a chi tonic. Again, it goes to the lung. All of these herbs that we've been talking about, I, I, chose them specifically because all of these are going to the lung. Um, 
they have that affinity. And what this herb does is it clears heat and it eliminates toxins. So this is really, really good. It also um, increases the number of lymphocytes and natural killer cells. So it stimulates the natural killer cells in the body. And the natural killer cells are the immune cells in the body that don't have to have a memory like the T cells, okay? Those are cells that have actually been uh, taught how to recognize a pathogen or an antigen in the body. The natural killer cells, they don't have to be taught anything. If they see any kind of an aberrant cell that does not belong in your system, the natural killer cells would automatically go and take care of it. So this is an herb that is really, really good for, for boosting that innate immune system that we have and stimulating that. Um, Gynostemin will also moisten the lungs and it also dispels phlegm. Um, reishi does that also. And um, a lot of the mushrooms tend to have that uh, resolving function to them also. Um, Gynostemma also reduces inflammation uh, and it's good for reducing blood pressure and cholesterol too. It's really beneficial for that. So I think, yeah, those are the main herbs that I want to talk about in keeping the immune system strong, but at the same time, um, keeping you sort of calm and centered. Fantastic. I think so many people right now are under so much stress and we need to be using tools that we know work really well. Cause when you take some of these herbs like Shizandra or uh, astragalus, it, they help to, if you have a, a cortisol spike, they help to kind of dampen that. And then if you're not producing enough cortisol, they help to kind of raise it up a little bit to give you some energy. So they're great at modulating that for you based on what you need. And people need support right now. Like you get support. <laughs> if, you, if you're feeling stressed out, you can take one of these and there, there's no, there are no side effects unless perhaps you have a sensitivity to one of the herbs. Um, so, uh, so can we talk about maybe go back to mushrooms again? Like, uh, is there a potentiation effect, say if a mushroom mushrooms are taken, say in a formula versus on their own, is there a benefit to taking a formula with a few of the mushrooms that you mentioned? Because of, um, because each mushroom, as I said, like the agaricus blazi, okay, that's a mushroom that will give you that broad spectrum that will activate every cell in the immune system. But the other mushrooms don't do that. They would probably, they have a tropism to one particular cell. So um, doing a broad spectrum uh, formula that contains like, we have one that has 12, um, it has uh, the agaricus in it. It has maitake, shiitake, coriolis, turkey tail, um, and a lot of other ones. And the reason that we did that was because we wanted to make sure that you have the mushrooms that are actually going to activate every single immune cell in the body on a very, very broad spectrum. Um, yeah, so I think, it's unless you know specifically what immune cell uh, a mushroom is that you are taking, it's a lot better to take something like a, a broad spectrum or a multi mushroom formula, uh, which will be a lot more beneficial uh, for you. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and it, guys, I posted a link here about George's favorite or mushrooms and immunity formulas. You guys can go to jingherbs.com slash Wendy and you can get 10% off if you use the coupon code Myers, M-Y-E-R-S. And you have one formula on here. It's Jing Herbs STR12. Can yeah. you tell us what that is exactly? Um, yeah, that's that's the one that I was just talking about. That's the one that has, uh, it has the reishi, chaga, agaricus, maitake, shiitake, all yeah, it's got twelve of the major medicinal mushrooms all in one. 
Yes, there's lion's mane, oyster mushrooms, yes. tremella, it's got a, a tremides, a bunch of different. Tremides versicola, yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of these mushrooms, like, we didn't get into that because we're more specifically talking about the immune boosters and the, the immune system, but um, a lot of those mushrooms have uh, a multi-dimensional effect in the body. They they uh, have a lot more benefit than just addressing the immune system. Some of them help to regenerate, um, uh, you know, brain cells, and uh, some of them are good for the skin, and some of them are good for lowering cholesterol. So there, uh, there are a lot of different benefits to a broad spectrum formula like that. And then you have another one here called a great guardian. And th these are on the link here that I posted here in the comments. What is the, the great guardian? Um, the great guardian is the one that actually contains astragalus, reishi, uh, gynostemma and schizandra. Okay, fantastic. So we actually went over uh, all those herbs. And so again, you've got um, uh a multi-herb formula uh, that's going to do several things. It's certainly going to boost the immune system, but you've got reishi in there that's going to keep you calm and centered. Uh, you know, reishi also opens the heart. Um, it it makes reishi can put a smile on your face. It it lifts the spirit, and certainly during times like this. A lot of us need to have our spirits lifted and you know that that herb will actually do that in a very profound way um and again as i said so astragalus is in there which is going to stimulate the t cells and the b cells and you've got the schizandra which is going to consolidate and stabilize the exterior of the body then you have the gynostemma again which is a great chi tonic and an immune booster and a good detoxifier too. Oh, fantastic. Right. Yeah. And then, um, as I do genetics on my clients and I find there's a lot of people genetically don't make enough beta glucans internally, they just have a genetic predisposition. And so I, I sell, I tell nine clients out of 10, they need to eat mushrooms to get these additional beta glucans that their immune systems need. So I am such a huge, huge fan of mushrooms. And so you'll have, you have another uh, product on this page or on this link that I just posted in the comments. It's fortified uh, platycodone and fertility. Yes. Can you, and am I pronouncing that right? What are, what are those? Yeah, platycodone and fritillary. Um, both of those herbs, again, uh, are herbs that target the lungs. Now, um, Platycodin, if you put platycodin into any formula, what it will do is it, it's considered one of the guiding herbs. So it's going to take it to the upper part of the body. But platycodin is an herb that also specifically goes into the lungs. And that's the only, that's the only organ system that it, it has a tropism for. Uh, so it goes directly to the lungs. And it opens and disseminates lung chi. Um, and it also dispels phlegm. The reason why we put that formula in that um, in that bundle is because um, right now we have to be really careful. If you start to have signs of phlegm accumulation in your lungs, okay, um, in general, that's not a good thing because once that happens, that that descending and disseminating f function of the lungs starts to become compromised okay so the organs the other organ systems in the body are not getting the oxygen that they need to function optimally okay um and then you're going to start once that happens the other organ systems are going to start becoming dysfunctional dysfunctional themselves. That's why in the progressive nature of the COVID virus, uh, attacking the lungs first and basically um, with that cytokine storm, what happens is there's an incredible amount of fluid and phlegm that starts to be produced. 
And in combination with a fever or heat, that's a really bad combination in any disease progression because when you have heat and you have fluid and the heat starts to evaporate or to thicken the fluid, okay, that's when you get that real lung congestion and you will start to get plugs. Um, it will really start to plug up the airways, the alveoli in the lung tissue. And um, that's when you really start. So you're basically um, putting the lung and its function out of commission. Once that happens, the rest of the organ systems are starved, starved of oxygen and they will start to shut down too. So it's really, really great to have formulas like this, like platycotton, which dispels that phlegm and clears it. Fritillary does the same thing. It clears and transforms phlegm, what we call phlegm heat in the lungs. Um, it alleviates cough. And um, in that formula, we actually modified it. We added um, Bicolin or a scutellaria, and we added Isatis. And both of those herbs are uh, considered heat clearing and toxic removing herbs. Uh, these are the ones that um, are really amazing in dealing with this kind of viral infection. And uh, scutellaria inhibits uh, a substance called hemagglutinin. And hemagglutinin is the substance that the viruses use to attach to the cell walls. So um, scutellaria, uh, or yeah, uh, so yeah, scutellaria uh, is an herb that actually inhibits the virus's ability to adhere to the cell walls. Um, it also, uh, down regulates. This is one of the herbs that down regulates that cytokine cascade, that storm. This is another one that will actually do that. Um, Isatis uh, does the same thing. That's uh, it removes toxins from the body. It drains heat, and uh, it's a very very strong antiviral um, component. So that's a really really good. That's a great formula now. You can take that formula, even if you are if you don't have an infection. For instance, if you're gonna go out, okay, if you have to go out shopping, even though you have a, a mask on, you've got gloves on, um, you can actually take that formula if you have to be out um, and it will actually help keep you healthy. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm reading here that you can also use it if you live in a really highly polluted area or city that, you know, people die of air pollution. I don't think people are really aware of this and where it's really bad, you know, over time that can shorten people's lives by many, many, many years. And it's estimated there's like 1.2 million deaths from air pollution alone just in China. And, and so that's going to be really key if you're in a city. And if you're a smoker or have quit smoking, you can help to clear out the lungs with that formula as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's really important. Um, it, it, uh, it helps keep the cilia also. It helps keep the cilia moving, you know, those little hairs that – are basically brushing out all those pollutants that you're talking about. And isn't it amazing during this time, maybe one of the silver linings, the air quality in major cities has become yeah, amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> right? We should do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we have a few questions from the, the viewers here. So Sandra, so thanks for joining us. So using a uh, Buner's herbal protocol that uses these herbal tinctures right now had good results using these for Babesia too. She had good uh, using for what? She had good results using these for Babesia infection. Babesia. Okay, I'm not familiar with Babesia. Okay, great. Okay, and so Mary uh, asks, is it safe to take the STR12 powder if you have non-Hodgkin's follicular lymphoma? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. it It'll seems be. like now they need a, she needs immune support. Really Absolutely. Down. So it's yeah. key. And I've also heard mushrooms can really help to, if someone's going through chemo, it really helps them to deal with the side effects of chemo better. It really helps a lot in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah. And yes. so Jackie, so I like that he has powders available. I do not like taking pills. Yeah. Join the club. So we like powders. <laughs> I like powders I can put in smoothies. So I like I like yeah, the yeah. I, ha I have your chaga uh, mushrooms in a powder. I just throw that in my smoothie and you know, it's taste a, yeah, it it's, a really, it's a really convenient form to do it in. Um, but you know the thing about it is you can always, especially capsule. You can open up the capsules and dump the powder and dissolve them. Use them the exact same way. I don't I don't like taking pills and capsules either that much, but you know, you can get around that. So Liz Donovan is asking about herbs and mushrooms for breast cancer. Ah, again, um, there are some, um, so the STR 12 would be a, a great formula for her to take, uh, you know, absolutely. Um, there are some mushrooms that are probably more specific for breast cancer, but I would actually have to um, look it up uh, in a reference manual. But doing, um, you know, if you've got agaricus blazei, as I said, you've got that broad spectrum, it'll stimulate every cell in the immune system. So that would be beneficial in and of itself. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And so Jody Daniels, thanks for joining us. So she is asking, can you please tell me where to get the spirit mushroom? Spirit mushroom. That's that is reishi. Okay, great. Perfect. Yes, reishi is the spirit mushroom. Commonly mushroom available everywhere. Be good fortune. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so uh, yeah, so you can get that on jingherbs.com. Yep. Sure, you have loads and loads of reishi ready to be shipped out. Um, so Eric Berry says, "Hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining us." And Kathy is asking, will there be a replay? Yes, all of these webinars or Facebook Lives, they all go on to youtube.com slash Wendy Myers, or just watch this again. Just stick around on Facebook. It takes a couple of minutes. The video will start all over again. You can watch it anytime. It lives forever on Facebook. Um, so I don't see any other questions here. Right now, right now, guys, before we leave, is the time to ask your questions for, for George of jingherbs.com. Uh, so we have a couple more here. So uh, so Jody, please repeat the website and spell it. Uh, it's jingherbs, J-I-N-G, herbs, H-E-R-B-S.com. And there's a link right here. You can go to jingherbs.com slash Wendy and check out these products and mushrooms that we're talking about. So can we get a list on your website of the herbs he's suggesting? Yeah, so there's a link right here we just posted. I will post it again, Jody, um, just for you. And we have a 10% off co coupon. It's uh, just the code Myers, M-Y-E-R-S, and you get 10% off anything that you want on the, this page. And so Liz is asking, um, what about mushrooms during radiation? Oh, they're amazing for radiation. But another herb, by the way, that is phenomenal for radiation is schizandra. So um, anybody who's doing, like if someone has to do radiation as a therapy, as an anti-cancer therapy, um, schizandra is a really, really good herb to do um, at not during, but right after um, to ameliorate uh, the side effects of doing radiotherapy. Yeah. So does it absorb radiation or how it works? It, um, it actually helps detoxify and yeah. Get oh, great. And let's see, so, uh, so Babesia is a tick infection. So it's kind of like a Lyme-like oh, co-infection. Lyme. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, those, uh, but you know, like if it's a Lyme, um, that's a spirochete. Uh, it's a different kind of infection. And spiro the thing about spirochetes is that they have an envelope. They have a protective barrier. That's why it's so difficult to treat Lyme uh, because there are very few substances that are able to penetrate the spirochete shell. 
and get at the at the virus itself. Yeah. So any mushrooms you're aware of that can help with that, or is it just a different approach for a BCA um, or Lyme like co infection? I think um, what they would do is they would probably help deal with a lot of the symptomology that goes along with it. Um, but I don't know how much it would actually do in reducing the, the viral load. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so Sandra is saying it's a Maria like infection, not like Lyme. Well, uh, Babesia is a co infection of Lyme. That's that's what I, we were saying before. Uh, but she's saying it's kind of more similar to malaria. Okay. Um, okay. Well, if it's, it's similar to malaria, um, then you de definitely the, um, uh, the toxin clearing herbs would be really good for that, like the Isidus and the Scutellaria. Um, those would be good. Okay, great. And then uh, Randall is asking, so Great Guardian is the immune boosting and preventive formula, so that's gonna help to boost your immune system? Yeah, I would say um, if you want sort of, if you want the first line of defense, if you wanna be just proactive and preventative, then doing the Great Guardian is is the one that you should be doing just in general. I mean, uh, we've had people who um, have come to us and like every single year they had multiple colds or they had the flu or they had sore throats and they start taking Great Guardian or even Astragalus by itself, for instance. Um, they would come back to us and that since I've been taking this, I haven't been sick at all. So that's like the first line of defense. It's a great formula in general, and it's and it's anyone can take Great Guardian. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you have, if you become, you know, if the immune system gets compromised, if you actually progress to having some kind of an infection like this, then you go to the ones like the fortified platycodon and fritillaria formula. Okay, great. And so uh, Angelica is asking, what would you advise to take to recover energy after COVID is gone? Because I hear that people can have really low energy for even up to two to three months. Uh, no, exactly. And um, the reason for that is the damage that the virus actually does to the lungs is lingering. So once you're over that, um, you have to do herbs that are actually going to start to uh, strengthen the lung chi again. Uh, again, astragalus would be a wonderful herb for that. Ginseng would be another great herb, um, you know, that's very famous, but ginseng would be another one because it's a chi tonic. So it's going to help you restore and get your energy back. But at the same time, it's beneficial for the lungs. Astragalus is beneficial for the lungs too. Um, so you'd also want to look at um, herbs that are going to uh, also keep the moisture of the lungs sufficient. Because a lot of times after something like that, because of the heat that has been there, the lungs become really dry. It's almost like, like a smoker who's taken all of that smoke in and the lungs like dry out because of it. Um, heat will do the same thing. So you have to sort of re-moisten and get the, um, the surface of the lungs moist again so that, so that whatever is there can be lifted out. Okay, great. Yeah. And so Jonathan just said, I just ordered the pill form of reishi for my son. He has eczema and re recently has had been, been having major flare-ups. Are there any other mushrooms he should take? I have been drinking a lot of kefir lately. Um, let's see. Um, Tremella uh, is one of the or uh, one of the mushrooms in the STR. He should actually he would probably benefit from the STR twelve. Okay, great. There are herb, there are mushrooms in that formula that are also really good for the skin. Of course, reishi is in there. Um, but he could do the str 12 and probably be better. Okay, great. And so next question. So early, thanks for joining us. So what do you recommend for gum health? Okay. Um, flossing. 
and brushing, <laughs> definitely. Um, but uh, usually uh, those are herbs that uh, blood movers would be good for keeping the gums healthy. Um, the mushrooms uh, in general, those would be good too. Um, but there's, you know, for gum health, uh, that's the tissue. So you could do a formula, uh, for instance, like ginseng and long gun. Uh, that's a classic Chinese formula. It's Gui Pitong is the Chinese name for it. And that formula is more specific for any kind of tissue in the body. You can, if you have to heal tissue or if you have to sort of regenerate tissue, but keeping any solid substance of tissue in the body healthy, that's a pretty good one to do. Ginseng and longer. That's the one I would recommend. And so Pam is saying, thank you so much, George, for your sharing your expertise. I really enjoyed this live presentation. I'll be looking to some of those mushrooms that I could be using for my health. And thank you, Wendy, you're amazing. So thanks for joining us, Pam. And so let's see, Allison is asking, I would love to know what George is reading right now. And if you can recommend some books on medicinal, medicinal mushrooms in Chinese medicine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm reading uh, the Tao Te Ching, which is one of the Taoist, uh, prob I'm sure you're probably familiar with the Tao Te Ching. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm reading that. Uh, I'm also uh, reading uh, books on um, herbs uh, the, that do comparison of different herbs in a category for like, like the heat clearing herbs and they'll go through and they'll give you, um, you know, similarities and differences, what each herb is doing. So I'm reading that too. And uh, let's see, a book on medicinal mushrooms. There's a good one by George Halpern. Um, and it's, I think it's called medicinal mushrooms. Uh, I think Andy Miller and George Halpern uh, are the authors of that. That's a really good one. You could also, uh, you know, the Materia Medica, um, uh, especially the Bensky uh, Materia Medica is a good one, uh, not only for uh, mushrooms, but for uh Oh, I think we lost George. <laughs> oh no, George, where did he go? I think his uh, his internet uh, went out here. That's too bad. Um, well, luckily we got most of the questions answered here, um, but hopefully George comes back on. But if he doesn't, uh, guys, I'm here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern doing these interviews and doing Facebook Lives. We'll be back oh, next oh, week. Oh, oh, hi, George. How are you? You froze for a second. Oh, I did? Oh, oh yeah. So we, uh, I think we, uh, I don't know what you, you were talking about the last couple of minutes, but we lost you for about a minute. Oh, okay. Um, you're talking about what you were reading, like the, maybe the last book you were going over. Yeah. One of the, one of the books that I'm reading is uh, a book that actually gives a comparison of herbs in, in a category. So they'll take like heat clearing herbs and they'll give you the specifics about why this herb is different than the other. And, what the differences and similarities are. So I'm reading that. And then the book I recommended for the mushrooms specifically, it's called Medicinal Mushrooms and the authors are George Halpern and Andy Miller. Okay, and fantastic. Medicinal Mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, great. And then uh, Maria Houston is uh, asking, I joined a little late, not sure if someone has already asked this, but what herbs would you recommend for someone who may have breast cancer? So we did answer that. If maybe you want to start the, the interview over and start watching it again, we did answer that already. And so James Lilly has a good question. I know James. Um, so what are your thoughts on mullein leaf tea as a way of optimizing lung function? Um, I th mullein is uh, primarily for moistening the lungs. Okay. Um, 
So it's it's good because it's really necessary to keep the lungs moist. That is their atmosphere. Um, but it doesn't really specifically have a lot of effect on the immune system. Uh, but as an herb for lung health, it's it's a good herb. Yeah, I've heard it's really great. So if you're having, a, like if you have hemochromatosis or iron overload, and though that can cause a cytokine storm uh, if you get COVID and the mullein leaf tea can bring your iron levels down really quickly. Uh, like if you do iron uh, dandelion root and mullein leaf tea, I've heard that's great for anyone with iron issues mm -hmm. to bring those iron levels down if you're, like, you can be in trouble. And it just yeah. is a really fast way to bring your iron levels down. Um, so, uh, so yes, that's all of our questions. Um, so, so, uh, any other last cl closing thoughts, George, about, uh, using herbs or, and mushrooms for immunity? Um, yeah, I would say, um, you know, always be proactive, um, and, and be preventative because that's, that's sort of our, our philosophy. Uh, um, it's the, the Taoist philosophy also is that you don't wait for bad things to happen what you do is you prevent bad things from happening. Um, taking a formula like the Great Guardian will hopefully help you from you know experiencing any bad things, especially during this time. Um, the other thing that uh, I said a lot in when when we did our podcasts is that you know you have to remember that you are in charge of your health. Ultimately, you are the only person in charge of your health. And uh, there may be times when you can't rely on anyone outside of yourself. So it's, you know, time that you actually um, take the reins of, of that position and take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait till everything breaks down yeah. and you have a diagnosis and you're like you you're so tired. You can't work. I mean, you don't, the warning signs are there before, well before that happens. And I, I'm just a huge advocate and, and I'm glad that you brought that up of, you know, taking care of your health, taking care of your immunity before you get a diagnosis, not, not when you get a diagnosis. So, um, so thank you so much, George, for, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes. And everyone go to George's website, jingherbs.com. Just an amazing resource, uh, super, super high quality herbs and I uh, highly recommend them. I take the reishi myself and I take the chaga myself as well. I'm going to have to try that great guardian. Um, cause that looks really good. So good if, yeah. And so you guys, here's the link again, if you want to go check out the products we were talking about for immune protection and immune boosting, there's also a little like lung immune support bundle in there as well. And if you use the code Myers, M Y E R S, you get a 10% discount. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm here every Tuesday at 5 PM Pacific, 8 PM Eastern. And if you guys miss any part of this, don't worry you can watch it again and just hold tight. As soon as we're done uh, with this broadcast, you can go on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Myers detox and watch us at any time. It'll start over in a couple minutes. It might take a few minutes for it to Facebook to render the video. And this will be up later tonight on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. So thanks for tuning in guys. I'll talk to you soon.